Uh, so I'm just going to kind of document my build here. This going to be like my garage build LQ4 six liter. Um, this is an iron block. It's out of like maybe like a 2004 ish uh, Silverado, probably like 2500, something like that. But it is a six liter. It's got the four inch bore. Um, cylinder walls look real good. This motor is in really good shape. It probably could have ran as it sat, but I went ahead and, and tore it down, checked the journals, uh, checked the cylinder walls. They're nice and smooth. Um, sometimes if a motor sits, you'll have like some pitting and rusting. This one does have some like coolant stands, but it's like seriously nothing, like nothing crazy at all. Um, so I went ahead and popped the pistons out. I bought this, uh, I call it a dingleberry honer. I, I think it's like four point, it's a little bit bigger than a four inch. So it's, it's a good size to uh, hone out these four inch cylinder walls. Yeah, this is this is what we're coming from nice and smooth there's not even a lip up here i'm really just doing this to knock off the glaze and cold you know stains from the coolant but uh they're they're in good shape good shape i'm just gonna use some uh penetrating oil and start going to town basically all right, here we go. So I hit it real quick in a forward and reverse uh, pattern. I really like the way it came out. I think it looks great. I've never actually used the proper little dingleberry honer. Those suckers can run about a hundred bucks. But I gotta tell you, man, they work, nothing works as good as those. That's for sure. So kind of quickly, I went forward and reverse uh, just to help seat the rings, you know, do, do what you wanna do. Comment how you like to, you know, get your degrees on the hatching, but this is mine. It might be a little flat, but it'll be fine, honestly. But I did go ahead. I'm swapping the LQ4 dished pistons. LQ4s have dished and lower compression. So I got some, I think LQ9 and LS2 have the same flat top style. So I am converting to the flat top higher compression pistons. And I'm also gapping my rings to 24 thousandths. Everyone, you know, has their preferences, but I was just, you know, I did a bunch of research and I just feel like 24 thousands is a good, uh, good middle ground of room gap to allow for some boost, but you know, not allow for too much of blow by. So I'm just going to set a ring in there. And then I use a piston that I'm not using with all the rings off and I'll just flip this sucker upside down and use this to push the ring basically to the middle of the, uh, of the bore. Let me get this piston nice and flat. Yeah, so I'm pushing it that far deep, right? Let me uh, get my gauge here. Is it 24 thousandths? 24. So yeah, I'll get it about halfway down there. I'll check it. This one's already done, so I know it's good. We're at 24 thousandths. Whenever I first got the rings and checked the gap, it was at, it was 18 thousandths, which might be good, you know, for a factory, you know, OE type build or whatever, but we're gonna be running boost. That's why I'm opening the gaps because with boost, you get higher temps, you get more heat, that uh, the rings will shrink and actually bind up and pop the lip off the piston. Like take this one, for example, with more heat, this gap here gets closer and closer and eventually they start touching completely and then they have nowhere to go and the ring buckles and then it'll just start chipping the piss into pieces. That's basically number one concern when you start running boost. So this part's totally up to you, but I'm, I'm polishing the, the journals only because there's some like oil stands and stuff like that, some grit. I'm not trying to remove any material. I'm using 600. The, the crankshaft is like very hard and steel. So 600 isn't really doing anything except for cleaning the surface, okay? Look at this polish. 600 grit, like really quick, and then finish it off with a sock and some uh, PB blaster. So right now I'm about to install my first piston. Make sure you offset your ring gaps. If you have them on the bow side, you can have blow by, and uh, you just want to clock them so they're 180 of each other. All the rings, the uh, oil control and the two uh, compression rings up top. So, you know, if that one's here, you want the other one to be 180 away from it. All right, I'm gonna use my trusty uh, engine building sock 
lubricate the cylinder wall and get this thing ready to drop in the piston. Yeah, those kids hollering in the background. But real quick, so from from the factory, there's like this little chamfer on the lip, right? And I got this Brian Tooley ring compressor. It's freaking perfect. It's got this lip that sets in that chamfer just to make the installation that much more smooth, right? So really recommend this. I'll link that as well. Like I said, everything I'm using, I'm gonna try to link just the, the bare necessities, you know? So, all right, let me get, I got it all nice and lubricated. Got the rings lubricated on the piston. Just regular, uh, some, some oil. Let me install this first one. All right, so I've got the whole, I guess what would be the passenger side squared away. I'm working on what would be the driver's side right now. And I know I said this would be like a how-to, but I can't help but like, I mean, what else am I gonna talk about? And also, sorry about the van being loud. It's actually starting to get kind of hot outside. Uh, so yeah, I got the journals polished up, like I said. I just hit that with 600 grit. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of some pointers. Uh, okay, on the on the bearings, the notches, they sit on the driver's side, on the top of the pistons, you've got your arrows, it's hard to see. That faces the front of the motor. So notches, driver's side, that to the front, your, let's see, oh, control rings, where this butts up, and you see, uh, the opening used to face downwards. Uh, I'm gonna have to get a new one to really show you. Hold on. I wasn't really sure, and I, I looked it up, and so it's gotta be like this. Where it touches, it's gotta be like that. It's gotta be an M, not a W. Um, what else? Make sure you're orientating your rings correctly. The top ring in this pack of rings is the same up or down, it doesn't matter. But the second ring, it's more for, uh, it's also somewhat of an oil control slash compression. It's tapered and it is labeled top. Um, here, why not, let me show you. Where, right there. See right, see it says top. Second ring does matter in the orientation. What else, what else? Oh, as you're going, as you're installing your pistons and everything and get them all, you know, in, in their home, always, I like to rotate the motor to make sure as I'm going, it spins over freely, nothing's in a bind. Oh. So I've got, like I said, I've got this whole side situated. Sorry about the mess. I'm just chunking things in that bin as I go. Old trash pistons, the wrist pins, all that. So as I'm going, it's with these four, the motor spins over beautifully. It's not hung up. There's no tight spots. So just as you're going, make sure you're spinning it. Make sure nothing's uh, in a bind. Everything's spinning over nice and freely. Oops. So let's see, I'm gapping the rings with 180. Uh, for 600, I use that to polish the journals. Basically just knock off the, um, the gunk on there is all that was for. Um, what else am I doing? That's basically it. Just polishing journals, gapping rings, honing the walls, and spinning it over as I assemble this thing. So, yeah, it's a mess. I'm gonna clean it. I'm gonna get it together, and I need a. It's got a lot of uh, cleanup work to do. I cleaned the deck on this side. The deck on the other side is not clean yet. But you know, it's a driveway build. This thing is not gonna be pretty, but I promise you, it's gonna run like a beast. So after I hit the crank with 600 grit sandpaper, I just get my little my sake here and I polish it. I finished it off with that. I mean, you'd be surprised what this looks like. Hopefully my phone will stay. Okay, so I'm gonna like crisscross it. I'm gonna go crazy at it with both hands. That, God, why does this sound so dirty? Let me show you the polish after I'm done. Look at this polish. 600 grit, like really quick, and then finish it off with a sock and some uh, PB blaster. <laughs> This is crazy. This is like a straight up, straight up garage build, man. But like I said, it's gonna be a runner. If you get your little nick in any of the bushings, don't be afraid to deburr it with some 600 grit. Just polish it out so you don't catch, you know, catch a nail on it. If you can't feel it, more than likely, it's good. And just that little nick will stop the wrist pin from wanting to, to rotate freely. It's, yeah, like I said, as you're going through here, just make sure everything's spinning freely moving freely, everything is nice and lubricated. If it spins over, if your piston and wrist pin go back and forth freely, you know, more than likely you're, you're in good shape. 
So this is the one that I deburred, and sure enough, the it, the wrist pin goes in there. I can rotate it. At first, it was getting snug up, but like I said, a little bit of 600, just knock down that little nick, and uh, we're good. So, uh, quick recap: I um, I checked the main bearings; they were fine. They they didn't look suspicious, so I left those alone. The only ones that look suspicious were the rod bearings. They had like some sort of surface rust build up, build up. So I did replace those. Standard journal size. All I do is polish the uh, the rod journal, put standard size rod bearings. Um, converted to uh, flat top pistons. These are like LQ9 slash LS2 style flat tops. Uh, new rings. Gapped them at 24 thousandths, which is slightly bigger than factory, which should allow for like a little bit more boost safely, I suppose, before you know breaking ring lands and stuff like that um let's see what else that's really all i did was new rod bearings pistons ring gap i got all eight in their uh in the holes what's next i think next episode i'll be doing uh cylinder heads you know head gaskets head bolts heads valve train oh camshaft of course that all will probably be next episode but yeah i'm just happy i at least got the uh short block somewhat together if you're gonna let it sit don't forget to coat it Got to fight off that surface rust. You'd be surprised how quick that uh, surface rust will pop up on a on an iron block. Anyways, thanks for watching this video. I'll link all the junk I used, I, the piss ins, this neat Brian Tooley uh, recompressor. This thing came in clutch. It made it really easy. I like the way it just kind of sits in the chamber and it's like a perfect transition. Um, anyways, yeah, that's it. See you in the next episode. Later.